Hi, thanks for coming and watching this video which is going to be about the most hilariously stupid scandals in modern British political history. So, if you want to take a small journey through some of the most stupid scandals to have hit the British political scene over the last 40 or 50 years, please sit back and enjoy. Number 1. Alan Clark and the wine tasting scandal. He was the most politically incorrect, outspoken, iconoclistic and reckless politician of our time, said somebody. Alan Clark, no stranger to gaffes and controversies. However, the one incident that stands out was the stupidest. And that was in 1983, his first speech to the House of Commons, and he had trouble reading from the pages in front of him. His rival, Claire Shaw, had accused him of being incapable, which is a rather polite British term for being hopelessly drunk. You see, Clark was indeed drunk. He had attended a wine tasting at a friend's house prior to his speech. He had started skipping passages, making his drunkenness even more obvious. He later published his diaries and he wrote that it'd certainly be fired after that. However, the scandal just blew over and a few years later, he was actually promoted. Number two is Ron Davis and... This comes from a time when, unfortunately, British politics was less tolerant and more bigoted than it is today. A time when people couldn't be open about their sexuality and this caused stupid scandals. Ron Davis had been a long-standing member of parliament and a long-standing politician. He had to resign from his post in 1998 after an event he described as quote-unquote a moment of madness. He claimed to have been walking down Clapham Common, which was a well-known gay cruising ground, when he said a stranger had asked him to dinner, which he accepted. Later that night, he said he was robbed by the stranger at knife point. He then said he was robbed again, uh, this time by three men who took away his car. He said he was ignorant of the area's reputation and that he was devoted to his wife. Now, afterwards, Davis admitted that he hadn't been truthful about that night's events. He admitted that he was bisexual, that he did know the man he'd had the dinner with, and that he'd in fact had a previous relationship with him. Less than five years later, when he was running for office again, the newspapers published photos of him leaving another gay cruising area. Yet again, he claimed ignorance, saying he'd been watching the badgers nearby and had just absentmindedly wandered into the area. Davis quickly dropped out of the political race that he was in and also disappeared into obscurity. Number three, Geoffrey Archer and the prostitute. At the time, the Conservative Party deputy chairman and best-selling novelist had been through several controversies, but none were bigger than his relationship with the known prostitute, Monica Coughlin. When the news of the world broke the story, thanks in part to the Coughlin's work with the paper, Geoffrey Archer sued for libel. During the trial, Archer referred to Coughlin as providing cold, unloving, rubber-insulated sex in a seedy hotel room. He won the suite through Thor's alibis, but was later convicted of perjury in 1999 when proof of his lies came to light. The party disowned him and his political career was over. Or, a good day to bury bad news? On September 11, 2001, as the United States and indeed the rest of the world was dealing with the terrible te uh, terror attacks, Labour Party spin doctor Joe Moore sent out an email to her government department quoting... It's a very good day to get out anything we want to bury. Councillors' expenses? Question mark. Sure enough, our office took the opportunity to release new information about councillors' finances. And it wasn't the last time she tried something like this. When Princess Margaret died the following year, Moore planned to release bad row figures on the day of her funeral. She did briefly survive the initial backlash, thanks to her televised apology, but she later re resigned amid the renewed criticism. Number 5. The Wilson Plot Harold Wilson was Prime Minister of Great Britain from 1964 to 1970 and then again from 1974 to 1976. During his second time he became more and more paranoid, convinced that MI6 was plotting to overthrow the government. At the time the Cold War was heating up, the British economy was struggling and Wilson was suffering from more and more delusions. Whether from forces within the British military or outside the country, whatever, he was convinced the queue was coming and he was convinced it was going to install Lord Mountbatten as his successor. Most people dismissed Wilson's delusions, but some actually believed him. And Wilson was so enthralled with the idea of his imminent doom that it was all he could talk about. George W. Bush, during his time as CIA director, exclaimed after a meeting with Wilson, he did nothing but complain about being spied on. 
Number six, the Profumo affair. Now, John Profumo was Secretary of State for War under Prime Minister Harold Macmillan. Stephen Ward, an, an older socialite and alleged pimp, introduced him to a dancer called Christine Keeler, who was also a Russian diplomat's lover. The two began an illicit affair, and Presumo, Profumo had to resign from his post in 1963 when evidence came forward. The next election, Macmillan's party, the Conservatives, lost. Ward went on trial for immoral offences, and he later committed suicide although some believe it may actually have been murder. British intelligence investigated the affair, and they discovered that the Russian diplomat received, in fact, no secrets from either Keeler or Profumo. Afterward, everyone just faded away into obscurity. But Robert Palladium Boothby. An MP for over 30 years, Robert Boothby had quite a reputation for his sexual prowess. In fact, in college, he'd even earned a name Palladium, after the famed West End Fiesta, because evidently he could go twice nightly. He carried on a long-time affair with the wife of Harold Macmillan, Dorothy Macmillan, and he was the Prime Minister for six years in the 1950s. He had a compulsive gambling habit, and that brought him into contact with his long-time boyfriend, Leslie Holt. Now, Holt also happened to be a cat burglar, and this relationship attracted the interest of the Quatrins, a infamous crime uh, duo that operated in East London. Uh, during the 1960s. Now, at the Sunday Mirror, they reported that Scotland Yard was investigating an unnamed peer's gay relationship with an underworld figure. The public, they suspected the paper referred to Boothby, which was enough for a response from the Member of Parliament. He denied the claims, sued the paper for libel, and actually won £40,000, which would be more than half a million at today's rates. He remained a staunch supporter of the craze and campaigned for them in Parliament, until their penchant for violence finally managed to get him to keep his distance. Number eight, we've got John Prescott's left hand. John Prescott, lifelong politician and deputy prime minister under, under Tony Blair in 2001. Now, he's out campaigning on a visit to the Welsh city of Real. He gets off the bus and local farmer Craig Evans throws an egg at him. Well, Prescott has spent time as an amateur boxer. So what did the deputy prime minister do? He got his left hand together and struck the protester in the face. One of the first and only times that we can remember a politician actually hitting back at a demonstrator. Now, he claimed self-defence and, because of this, avoided a criminal prosecution. The farmer also escaped charges, perhaps because getting punched by Prescott was punishment enough. Prescott later joked about the incident, lamenting in that he hadn't ducked quickly enough and he faced very little backlash at all. When asked what he thought, Tony Blair said, John is John, and I'm lucky to have him as my deputy. And weren't we all lucky to have Tony Blair as our Prime Minister, he says, with a gun to his head. Nine, Rinkergate, which concerns the leader of the time of the Liberal Party, Jeremy Thorpe. Now, he began a relationship with the wrong fellow in 1961, a man named Norman Scott, who began talking about their affair. He actually described the sex as being dry and as unwelcoming as eating a hedgehog. Now, Thorpe managed to keep the year rumours from getting to the public for years and years and years. However, Scott became a major liability for both him and his party. Thorpe contacted an ex-pilot, Andrew Gino Norton, and hired him to actually kill Scott. The assassin drive or drove Scott into the middle of the roads, along with Rinker, a great Dane the man happened to be watching. He prepared to shoot Scott, but first he decided to shoot the dog. And when he next turned to Scott, the gun jammed. Newton panicked and fled, leaving Scott alive. The ensuing trial culminated in an acquittal for Thorpe, and he faded, unsurprisingly, from public life afterwards. Number 10. The death of John Stonehouse. Now, by everyone's account, Stonehouse is a regular politician. He worked in Parliament for nearly 20 years. However, following several poorly conceived business ideas, he tried embezzling money and attracted the attention of the authorities. Just before he was due to be charged, his clothes were found on a beach in Miami, and it was presumed that he drowned. Unbeknownst to anybody else, he was actually alive. He was living in Australia with his mistress, under the assumed identity of one of his dead constituents, a guy called Joseph Markham. His run from the law only lasted about a month, because he was discovered by chance and then taken back to Britain, where he ran his own legal defence. 
He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, which I presume would include every politician in the world as a defence. Uh, this fouled. He was convicted for nearly 20 different counts of fraud and theft. Yet, because despite this, he was only sentenced to seven years. He served just three before being released due to poor health and fading into obscurity. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed this journey through 10 British political scandals of the last 50 years. If you remember any of these events, please comment on them and tell me what your perspective was. Also, if there were anything that uh, I left off and you feel should have been included in this list, also please comment on that. And any general feedback or comments on the video are always welcome. Please also subscribe to my channel. There are new videos coming two to three times a day. Fresh content that will cover top tens from the entire spectrum. You never know what you're going to get, so please subscribe. And check the other videos that I've got on my channel. I'm sure there will be something out there that you'll find enjoyable. Thanks for watching again and bye!